While classrooms across Eastern North Carolina stand empty and students and teachers are tucked away at home, we know a great secret. Learning can happen anywhere. In fact, learning can happen everywhere. Welcome to Eastern Carolina Education Connection, a partnership with WNCT and Pitt County Schools. We're here to connect and reconnect with students, teachers, parents, and community during this unique and remarkable time in our state's history by helping you learn from right where you are. Hi friends, welcome to today's episode of Eastern Carolina Education Connection. I'm so excited today. Poppy and I are gonna go on a field trip just like our good friend, Miss Frizzle. Miss Frizzle's gonna take us on an adventure in this story called Magic School Bus Hops Home, and it's an exploration of a habitat. What are the things that living things need to live and thrive in a space? And then Poppy and I are gonna jump in that big blue Jeep and we're gonna go on an adventure of our own to explore some habitats at a time for science with our good friend, Maria McDaniel. Um, so let's take a look at what Miss Frizzle does first and then we'll see if we can see some of the same things and make some real world connections when we get to a time for science. Here we go. Magic School Bus Hops Home by Pat Ralph and Nancy Stevenson and it's published by our very good friends at Scholastic. So appreciative of them sharing their books with us. So I'm hoping that maybe Big Poppy can get that blue Jeep. Poppy, are you here? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Poppy, get it gassed up. We're getting ready to go. We're gonna head out to go see our friend, Maria McDaniel, at a time for science. And let's explore some habitats of our own. Giddy up. Hi, it's Poppy, and I'm here at a time for science with my friend, Maria. Maria, tell us a little bit about what you guys have going on out here at a time for science. Well, at a time for science, we have 400 acres of habitats and nature to, for you to discover and learn about. We have hiking trails, we do kayaking excursions, we have field trips for all ages from preschool all the way to senior citizen groups. And we have lots of fun out here learning all about nature and animals. Well, let's go check out some of the things okay. that you've got out here. Sounds like fun. And so we are here in the planetarium and this is Mr. Brian, and Brian, tell us about the planetarium here. So we're in the Cayuli Planetarium, which is located down Highway 11 in Grifton, and we have a digital planetarium where we can fly through the solar system, we can check out different planets, even go to other galaxies. Cool, and so show us some of the things, some of the science equipment that you guys use. So back here we have some astrophotography, all these beautiful images were taken just outside of Greenville by a VCU professor. We have some telescopes that I have to use for different public events. We like to do lots of night sky viewing out here. It's very dark, so we get a good look at uh, the night sky. And then over here right in the center is the planetarium projector, which houses pretty much a model of the entire solar system so we can go back in time and go forwards in time to see what the sky looked like on any night. That is so cool. And so I guess because we're in this closed space and there's no windows, you can actually like project and see stars even in the daytime. Yes. So we'll cut out all the lights, it's dark before you start the planetarium show, just like it does at night to see the stars. So when you talk about looking back into the past, um, what are some things that would be interesting to see in, from the past? One of my favorite things to mention and make sure everybody is aware of is that when you're looking up into to the night sky, you're looking into the past because light from these distant stars takes time to travel to us. So doing astronomy is like doing archeology. span the, the farther away something is, the farther in the past you're seeing. So I know a lot of times we look up at the night sky and we talk about all the stars that we see, but what are some other things that, that you're looking at besides stars when you see those points of light? Well, there are a number of different things they are called deep space objects. So these things are way outside of our solar system and they can be anything from big space clouds, which we like to call nebulas, or even other galaxies. And galaxies are just the largest collections of stars there are 
we live in the Milky Way galaxy, but there are 10 trillion other galaxies out there for us to look at and enjoy. This is the entrance to the trail system. This is where you can go back to the ponds and check out all the different habitats. Nature. So this is Sam, and Sam is an environmental educator with a time for science. And Miss Sam, tell us about this playscape that we have out here. This is our nature playscape that's built entirely out of recycled materials or natural materials. And it's a great place for little ones to come and explore and play and build some skills and figuring out how to balance and how to maneuver. So we have some ropes for climbing. We have some balance beams for walking on and stumps from hopping to stump to stump. There's a lovely bamboo maze to work your way through. There's also a fort building area where kids can build their very own forts out of sticks and logs. All right, you got me? I got you, boo. to one of our trails, one of the many trails we have out here at A Time for Science. We're going to walk over a little bridge and see what's on the other side. So all along our trail you'll find signs like this that tell you a little bit about the plants and animals that we have out here at A Time for Science. You can read a little snippet there and there's also a QR code. So if you hold your phone up to the QR code, it'll scan it and take you to a little video that tells you even more about that plant or animal. sassafras tree. So that is a beaver dam. This is actually one that was in our story. Did they talk about? They oh, did, yeah, because the did. water fills up like a bathtub. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you can tell we're like the water here is deeper because the beavers have stopped it up and there's just a little bit of a trickle that goes underneath. We're out here by Maggie's Pond where we found a spot where some turtles have hatched come out of their egg and hopefully made their way over into that pond over there in their habitat. Did you know that turtles spend most of their life in the water? And that's why they often have webbed feet or flippers. Teeming with life. We got ourselves a habitat. So in terms of habitat, like what types of things live in the pond? Oh, all the way from the smallest creatures, we have dragonfly and damselfly larvae living in the pond. And there are tadpoles and fish. There's also frogs. Ducks and geese come here. There are great blue herons and green herons that make their home out here. Kingfishers come out here to fish. There are turtles of all sorts living in this pond. There's a beaver chewed stick right over there, so there are also beavers making a home in this pond. Maybe an alligator. Hello, students of Pitt County in Eastern North Carolina. This is Fritz Robinette, STEM coordinator for Pitt County Schools, at Science Guy Fritz on Twitter, coming at you with another STEM challenge you may want to try at home. See if you can't uh, fool your mom and dad, fool your cousins, your aunt and uncle, your big brother, big sister, little brother, little sister. This is a really fun one, really easy, doesn't require hardly any materials. I think everybody can do this at home. Um, it really requires people to think a little bit differently. All you need for this challenge, a piece of regular computer paper, printer paper, notebook paper, anything that's kind of normal, eight and a half by 11 size, and some scissors. The younger kids, I might suggest some safety scissors or maybe have help of a mom or dad uh, with you. So pretty simple, the challenge is, can you cut a hole in this piece of paper that's big enough that you can walk through. So you try and do this in a traditional way, you'll probably have some trouble. So let me show you the trick behind this. Okay? Make mom and dad leave the room so you can do this. I'm gonna trick them here in a couple minutes. All right, you wanna take your piece of paper and you wanna fold it hamburger style. So you've got a closed end and then the open 
open end down here. And then what you want to do is take your scissors and from the closed end, the folded end, you'll want to cut long strips all the way almost to the end, about a centimeter or two apart. So probably eight or nine of them all the way across. There's my first one. You can kind of see I didn't cut all the way. The second one. And on a scientific concept that this kind of um, teaches us a little bit is that we can make changes to objects like paper that can be either chemical changes, which turn the, sub the um, paper into something new and different with completely different properties, or we can do what we're doing in this challenge, which is a physical change, where we change the object, but it doesn't change the properties of it. So after I make all these cuts in this paper, it's still going to be a piece of paper um, with all the same properties that a piece of paper might have. So as you can see, I kind of created a little kind of grass skirt looking thing. That's the first step. The second step then, and this might get a little tricky, is to turn this around this direction and cut slits this way right in the middle of each one of these um, little grass skirt things. So I'm going to do the same thing just from the opposite side. I'm going to do that with every single one here. Apologize for my slow cutting. Hope you all are staying safe during the COVID-19 outbreak. I know our family's staying safe. We're staying at home as much as possible, playing games and cards, and watching Netflix. Hope you're doing the same. Now, I've got a paper that's cut into all sorts of crazy pieces, and the last thing I need to do is from the folded end, not the la very last piece, but every other tab here, I just need to put my scissors in between here and make a cut right there. So for all of these little tabs, I'm going to make a cut there. I'm going to get the next little grass skirt tab, put my scissors in between and cut there. Bear with me here. My sticky fingers. Cut that one. Cut that one. Cut that one. And we hopefully you're doing this a little faster than I am. Cut that one and then my last one. I've got about eight tabs here or so that I've had to cut. Now what I've created, last one. This one's always tricky. There we go. Now what I've created when I unfold this is a gigantic hoop out of my paper that I can walk through no problem. Piece of cake. I could probably drive my car through that thing if I wanted to. So see if you can't try that challenge and challenge the people that you know to cut a hole in a piece of paper that they can walk through. Good luck and we'll be back in a little while with another STEM challenge. So tell us about the boats and the opportunities that people have. We have opportunities for kayaking out here in our shallow pond. It's only three feet deep in the deepest part, so if anyone falls out, they can just stand up. It's a great place to learn how to kayak. We have those opportunities on Saturdays from 10 to 2. We also offer some kayak opportunities a few times throughout the year on the Consentia Creek. So after you've learned how to kayak in the pond, then you can go and try it out on open water. And we kayak with all of our summer camps, and it's always an option with field trips and groups that are coming out to visit. Perfect. What might we see on the pond? Oh, when you're out here paddling, you can look and maybe see some turtles popping their heads up. You can see some fish. And if you look up in the sky, all sorts of birds will come by. We have osprey that come here to look for fish in the pond. We have bluebirds and purple martins hanging out nearby. So if you keep your eyes peeled, you can see a lot of wildlife. So lots of habitat. So here at A Time for Science, they have specimens of different animals. And you can see that this is a bobcat. We actually do have bobcats uh, in eastern North Carolina. There is our friend, the trash panda, AKA also known as a raccoon. We have a beaver doing what he does best, gnawing on sticks. <laughs> we have this cool looking squirrel and all sorts of artifacts from feathers to turtle shells and different skulls. Lots of nature to look at.
in the center. So one of our favorite activities that we do with younger children is to, uh, it's called Animals with Superpowers. Uh, most animals have a superpower. It's about learning about what they do that's better than any other animal. And all the animals are indigenous to Pitt County and Eastern North Carolina. We hide these animals that you see here along the trail, and there are many more. And then we take this group of children down the trail and they find them. So for example, they may find the river otter. Well, he has a capital W on his back because his superpower begins with a W, the word whiskers. River otters have the most sensitive whiskers there are, and they can determine if something has jumped in the water and whether it's gonna be a predator or whether it's gonna be dinner. And so they will know by their whiskers whether the water has moved or not. Black bear has a superpower too of smell. They can smell something a mile away. So we tell the kids, you already know you're here. So if they were hungry, they would have already come out. But this is our black bear, this is our deer. And the deer has a, a capital A on its back for antlers because they are one of the hardest substances in the world. And we learn all about our animals and then we carry them out in our arms and hold them tight and bring them back to camp. They talk about that dam and how they built that. Mm -hmm. That is one of the habitats that we did. So this is a beaver and this is what they actually look like. And if you notice, they have long claws on their front feet, but their back feet are webbed. And the webbed feet are there for helping them swim fast but these are for helping them grab things and hold on to things, such as tree limbs. So if you notice this particular uh, piece of wood has teeth marks on it and they gnaw the bark off and eat it. And they will gnaw until their teeth wear down because if not, their teeth would just keep growing and growing. They are cousins to other rodents such as mice that, and rats that will gnaw their t teeth down as well. Um, Beavers build their homes in the water and they will dam up a place so that there's going to always be water there. They will mud leaves and create shingle-like things on top to create a nice home for them to raise their young in and to live in. That creates a, a lot of havoc for people who are trying to have good water flow. So a lot of people think of them as pests, but we think they're pretty cool animals to keep around. And we love that they've chosen a time for science as their habitat. So tell us a little bit about summer camp opportunities. We have summer camps all summer, and you can register at our website, www.atimeforscience.org. The summer camps are for children ages um, kindergarten, rising first graders through fifth grade. And during those summer camps, we do all kinds of fun activities. They are themed. We may be learning about recycling. We may be learning about space. We may be learning about animal habitats and gardening and how to uh, make the most of use of food and grow your own food. But they're always very interesting and a lot of fun. And every afternoon, we spend some time on the water kayaking, which is a great end to our day. Everyone's very tired at the end of the day, but they've had a lot of fun. Well, thank you so much for inviting us out and showing us everything. Thank you for having us. We've enjoyed having you. Hi friends, I just don't want you to forget, we've got our Facebook page where you can also put some submissions of things that you've created, things that you've learned from the lessons that we've done. Just go to Facebook and type in at PCSECEC -E and let us see the magic.